Mandy from Creative Matters. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us again. Um, today we're going to be looking at bird sculptures and it is part two of our series. So there is a part one which is on our Facebook page or on our YouTube channel and uh, this is the second one after that. So the first one we did the construction where we created um, legs and different features out of recycled cardboard and then we also made a bird using paper and cardboard and tin foil and masking tape around a um, recycled bottle. So if you haven't already got your birds ready, go back and do that part one and then you'll be ready for the paper mache phase. Okay, awesome. So it'd be great to see if some of you are watching live. So make sure that you write your comments in because I can see them on the screen and then I'll get back to you after the video. Okay, so these are a couple of, a couple of the birds that I created last time with you. Um, this one has got quite a lot of the different feet, extra features. This one is pretty plain and simple and I'm going to be adding some extra sort of shapes and lumps once I'm actually starting the paper mache phase. And then um, there's this one here as well. So today we're going to be using something that you all have at home and that is flour and water. So just plain flour, doesn't really matter what kind of flour I suppose. And this is the glue that we have created. So I've made a little bit before we started. It is just flour and water equal parts of each. So I'm thinking a little about a quarter of a cup of water and a quarter of a cup of flour seems to be about right. And so that makes quite an interesting sort of, you know, gloopy glue that actually goes on better than you think. So I gave this one a little go here. This is using magazine paper. So if you haven't actually got paints, it might be a nice idea for you to go straight away and working on collage and using coloured paper perhaps and that could actually be your final your final version of your bird. So this is the blue sky from a magazine here. So if you'd like a blue bird you could choose paper out of the magazine or colours out of the magazine that suits you. You could also as you're actually paper mashing start doing stripes. So you could start with red down the bottom then green then blue or you might want a kind of green feel all over like a garden bird and you could you could cover your whole bird with that um, with that green sort of feel from the magazine. The other idea is if you do have some paints or you do have something that you can cover your bird with even it could be fabric or beads or sequins or all sorts of extra sort of mixed media um, then you could maybe just do it to start with with some sort of paper and that's maybe a bit plainer so it could just be printing paper that you've got in your printer hopefully um, it could also be this brown paper which is just a brown paper bag that I've got from the supermarket and I'm just ripping this up so that could also be quite a nice finish just having a brown recycled paper bird you don't have to paint it it's just an option but if you do want to paint it we are doing the design and the paint in part three which is live on Wednesday and then again will be on your YouTube channel, on our YouTube channel, Creative Matters NZ, and uh, on our Facebook page. So this glue is actually surprisingly good. You'd think it would end up really stinky and smelling like baking, but it's actually not too bad. If you have a look at the blue here, there's not even really any sort of flowery residue. The white is a little bit flowery, it's still wet, but I think as it gets drier, you can just kind of rub that off and it should be fine. Hi Jago. Hi guys, hi Frida. Okay, so I'm just going to show you some of the um, basic techniques for paper mache. First of all I'm going to show you the glue making, so we'll make up a little bit more glue. We've got a quarter of a cup of flour, a little bit of a maths lesson here also. It's exciting. Add that into your bowl, flour first, and then take your water and add that. And then just using either your brush or your fork, really doesn't matter, you just give it a bit of a mix up. So I've got heaps here now, so there's no excuse for me not to finish all three birds. And I see Mazzy walking past. Mazzy, come and say hi to Frida. Come here. Come on, have a gift. Oh no, no eating! 
No eating. <laughs> Nessie likes the taste of that glue. Yummy. All right, so I'm just going to mix it a little bit more so it's not too lumpy. Mine's got a little bit lumpy, but I don't think it really matters. And actually, you don't even really need to do it before, before you start. You can just pretty much get straight into it once you've made it. Or you might like to make it just a little bit before you eat it. I'm just going to show you a few techniques with this uh, blue paper here. It's slightly stiffer. So if you've got quite a stiff paper, it's a slightly different technique. So first of all, when you're paper mashing, make sure that you make your rips, a little pile of rips first. There's nothing more annoying than having really sticky flowery fingers and having to rip up pieces. So with whatever you choose, whether it's your white or your brown paper or magazine paper, rip it up, make a nice little pile about this kind of size. Or you can even make some smaller pieces as well. And I'll rip up my white. Now sometimes you find with paper, if you rip that one, that way it goes all over the place. But if you rip long ways, there's a much neater strip. That's something quite scientific also. Don't ask me to explain why. Something to do with warp and weft feel. Okay, and then we just can make our smaller strips. Maybe some longer ones as well. So I've got all my strips of paper and my little piles ready to go. And then we can start. So I know that some children and some adults as well really can't stand having sticky fingers and I totally get that. I actually don't mind, surprisingly. But if you really don't like it, you can just use a brush and brush on to start with. In fact, it's a good idea to brush it to start with. So there's plenty of glue on the, on the bird. And then take your piece and it might be good just to dip it a little bit. Stick it on. If you really hate glue, use your brush to get it in place. But you can see it is quite tricky to use the brush. So if you can bear it, it's actually easier to use your fingers because you kind of have to really push hard to get it in and nice and smooth. You're not just sort of sitting the strips on like, like they're not attached properly. You're actually kind of molding them into the shape so that they stay and you're overlapping so instead of placing pieces side by side we really want to get them overlapping and that is the thing that makes it really super strong so I've already got glue on there from what I brushed on sometimes it's good to just get a little bit more glue and and rub it in and massage it so it's really smooth, no sticky yucky bits. And then the next one here, you can dip it in if you need a bit more glue. It's already a lot of glue on there, and then you overlap again. And then you kind of, especially with the stiff paper, you have to keep sort of rubbing and massaging it in until it feels like it's really firm and stuck nicely. As the glue dries, then everything will be nicely stuck together, hopefully. Okay, so if you're using your white, the white paper like this, or even the brown paper, it's a little bit easier because it's slightly softer. So you can sort of put that on. It's a little bit easier to mould into the shape. Put it on your fingers, rub it in like that. Little piece. It's fine to just keep overlapping because the overlapping is what makes it really strong. And what we're doing here is really applying like a sort of final skin onto your sculpture which keeps all that construction inside nice and tight and secure but also gives a really smooth finish and paper mache is really good also for connecting so if you've added on a little part like these feet then the paper mache is going to be the thing that keeps it all together so I'll just show you that now take your piece of paper or get your glue on first plenty of glue so we're wanting to have glue on the actual bird part and then coming down onto the feet so that the feet are really securely attached to the body so we're going to have a piece of paper that goes over the body gluey fingers 
massage it in and then keeping the shape of this in here and then coming out onto the foot. You don't want it to go so that it's just sort of from there to there like that because that really just you kind of lose the shape of your bird. So we want to keep the shape in here, mold it. That's actually a bit wide so you can see that I can't really get it around that corner. So it's a lot easier to have a slightly thin, narrower piece in this case. And over the top and then over the foot. So then take another piece over the top, push it into the body shape and then over the feet like that. And then when that dries you've got a really great sort of connection between your feet and your bird. There is no reason why you couldn't just paper mache down to the bottom of the bird if you wanted to and leave the feet as cardboard and then you can just paint the feet afterwards, not a problem. It's up to you. If you've got something like wings and lots of other little features then uh, you might like to just um, paper mache over those as you're working so that you've got your body and your sort of wings and extra features paper mache or you could do it that you just paper mache sort of under it and around it and leave your wings depending on what you've made your wings out of. Okay now one other thing that's really important is making little extra sort of bumps and bubbles on your, on your um, sculpture. It's a really good idea for those final little extra features to do it in the paper mache stage. So if I want little bumps over my little guy, I can just screw up a piece of paper like that, or you can make it bigger if you want to, or smaller. Hold it in place here, and then using, actually you could use toilet paper or paper towel if you wanted to. Oh, there's he barking. He barking. She wants to have a go. You can take this, you can take this um, uh, paper towel if you want to, to hold on. What are you doing? What is it? Ooh, smells good. You can take this and um, add it. So it gets all really sort of soft when you add the glue. And he's very interested in this glue. And then get lots of glue on your fingers. And you're connecting this lump to the birdie. I need a little bit more. Put the glue onto your bird first. Just go over the top, more glue on your fingers. Make sure that it's really well connected all the way around, not just over the lump, but bringing it all the way across here so that it's nice and strong. And then you can start to sort of shape around it. It's not a booby, okay? It's just a lump. Put another lump in a different place so you don't get any ideas. Okay. One here. Let's put one here. Same again, get glue all over around the edges. Then place your paper towel over. I love the way Matthew's watching. Can you see her? I hope you can. She's really super interested. My best pupil ever. Thank you, Mads. Okay. Like that. So you can see you can make all sorts of really cool wacky shapes for your bird. All over if you want to whatever you like. Okay and then once you've done your lumps then you come back to your other paper over the top and just keep building and smoothing and the main thing is as I always say to my kids when I'm working with children in our workshops massage it like it's a little baby. Massage really gently all the time so you haven't got any sticky uppy bits and then you work your way around and put some extra stuff here and just making sure like I said that you're overlapping every time 
So in the end, you should have a really smooth sculpture that's all covered in paper and it's nice and strong. All your features are connected really well. And then once it dries, it's perfect surface for painting on. Hi, Susanna. I think Susanna's talking to you, Natty. I just can't quite read it, but we'll reply to Susanna in a minute. Can you come up here? Come up. Hey, okay. she really likes the smell of that flower glue. All right, so we're just going to leave it there, everybody, today. I hope that you can achieve that and then join me on Wednesday at 11.30 live or um, just find our video on Facebook or YouTube and um, then we can do our painting and our designing for next time. Great to see you. Thank you for joining us. See you soon. Bye.